Hi guys, I thought I'd do another chippy choppy today. Um, I know I do quite a lot of them, but the thing is with those, you can actually get so many different stone looks. So I'm going to do another one today, and this is um, a faux Tibetan energy jasper. Um, so what you're going to need for this is some translucent, and I've just got Primo. I think this is white, yeah, white translucent. And I'm going with my Picasso inks again, and I'm going to be using the ruby, the rose hip, oops, the manganese blue, I think that's how you say it, violet, and sapphire. So we've got five colours. I'm also going to be using some gold mica powder and some translucent liquid sculpey but I'm just going to put this to the side so I can tip it upside down so it's easier to pour all right and a roller and a blade so I'm just going to get my pack of clay and open it and I am going to be using a whole block for this okay so we've got five colours but I want a little bit more of the reds. So let me think about this. I'm going to cut this up. So let's say this will be the ruby red. And this will be the rose hip. And I'm just going to leave this little piece left over from that half of the block. Which is going to be just translucent. And then I've got my other three colours. So I'm just going to cut this into three equalish sections like so and I think I'm just going to take a little bit off that because it's a little bit bigger and stick it on the red okay actually I'm just going to make this one a little smaller as well because I do want a slight amount more red than the other colors so let me just see uh, yeah that'll be fine all right so I've got my five little blocks of clay for each color um, and I'm just going to take each block each chunk and roll it out just roughly at this point I suppose I could do most of this off camera but I'll just do the first two so you can see what it is I'm doing so take each of your little chunks of clay, except the translucent, because that's just going to get chopped up. And take each colour and add to each chunk of clay. So I've got the ruby and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five little drops like that. And I forgot my brush. Poo. I'll just use my finger for this one. <laughs> I'll get inky fingers and then when I'll do the rest off camera I'll go and grab a brush. I cleaned out my craft area yesterday and I took all my brushes upstairs to be washed and I forgot to bring them back down. All right and then let's take the rose hip and same thing one two three four five ish drops just rub it over the clay just so it dries a bit quicker and I'm going to do the exact same thing with all th all the other colours that are left um, so I'm going to roll these out like I did with these two add each colour to each block of clay or add the colour to each block of clay and then they're going to get passed through the pasta machine to thoroughly mix them um, actually guys what I am going to do is just take a little piece of it off each section, just a tiny piece off each section and roll those separately. But I'm not going to completely mix that. So it's just going to be a little bit more um, less mixed, <laughs> a little bit more less mixed. That makes sense, Deb. You know what I mean. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go and do the rest of these off camera. I'm going to grab a brush. I don't get ink everywhere. And then I'm going to pass each colour through the pasta machine. And I will be back. Okay guys, so I've taken each um, little chunk, mixed individual colours into each little chunk um, and rolled 
the first part into completely mixed it like this but then the little bit that I took away not completely mixed so it looks like this and then I just literally rolled them into logs so you've got the thoroughly mixed and the not thoroughly mixed and I've done that for each colour okay so I just took each one and just rolled it into a rough log ready for chippy choppying so I did a little um, video in group in my group the other day not a live just a recording of me um, talking about something um, I'm so scared to do a live I'm pretty camera shy believe it or not but I took the plunge and I did it so everybody could actually see me talking and not just my hands um, I don't know why but I felt like a right plonker <laughs> and you probably don't even know what that is but um, that's that was what the whole thing was about was Nottingham slang and plonker is obviously a slang word I felt embarrassed I felt silly but um, I did it anyway so for those of you that are in my Facebook group um, you never know I might actually do a live one of these days I'm still a little bit reluctant but we'll see all right so I've just rolled all these into their respective logs and for this stone you do really need to try and keep the colors separate from each other and this clay is a little hard to condition so that's why it's taken me a bit of time just to get it back into a ball or a log but um, it's not that big of a deal because it's all going to get chopped up all right so I've got all my individual colors ready to go and like I say try not to get them too mixed up but let's just start with our little bit of transit you should have left over because that's just going to stay trans oh my gosh I cleaned up yesterday and I don't have any towels or anything they've all been washed I'm so disorganized anyway I've got my trans and just the usual chippy choppy I'm doing fairly whoops fairly angular pieces as usual I don't want them to look too rounded and I don't want the pieces in this to look too big either now with some of the other faux stones I've done this way, um, I've kept some of the pieces quite chunky. But this stone, um, the pieces, you know, the individual little chippy choppy bits aren't as chunky. So I'm going fairly small, but not like turning it into crumbs or anything. Okay, so there's that pile. Again, we need to keep it all separate. So I'm just going to slide that over out of the way. And then I'm going to get my first colour. This was the uh, poppy red, was it, that I used? What the heck is Where's that gone? Oh, there it is. Oh, ruby. Ruby, not poppy red. So, ruby. So, this is the ruby. And same thing. I'm just going to chop both of those logs and they're going to all get mixed up together. Some thoroughly mixed and the other little bit not thoroughly mixed and it just adds a little bit more of an interest to the stone some striation as they say okay so again fairly small pieces I mean it doesn't matter if there's a few bigger chunks in there but smaller than I would normally go okay again that needs to go over to one side keep it separate take the next color and chippy choppy that and I've got a feeling I've mixed the red up with the rose hip but oh well it doesn't matter too much I think this should have gone in that pile oops not bothered not worried it will still work out fine because the two reds are going to be relatively close together anyway so I'm not too worried about that actually might make it look a little bit cooler mixing it like that hmm. De -de -de. chippy choppy a couple of 
couple of little bigger pieces there. I just want to. All right, so that's that pile. Again, I'm just going to move that to one side. And then the violet that I used, this time I have got the right colours together. And again, just chippy choppy all the way through. I know I always keep saying, oh, I don't want to do any more chippy choppy stones, but I don't know. I'm just always so drawn to them because really, you can't really go wrong with them, guys. Even if you get the colours a little bit wrong or the chunks a bit too big or a bit too small, they still look good. And there's just so many stones out there that you can use this technique for. So I, I know I do keep coming back to it, but I know people like them as well. So, And um, you're not always doing the exact, the exact same thing for each one. Like obviously this one, you've got the mixed not mixed you've got to keep it the pile separate rather than just throwing it all together and obviously your choice of colors is what makes it look like the stone you're trying to um, imitate so while it's a very easy technique um, you can just get so many nice things from it I'm sure there's some of you out there that will be thinking, oh no, not another chippy choppy and can probably work out what it is that I've done. But um, there's a lot of people that do like to see it. So I try and do videos that I know everybody will like at some point, if you know what I mean. I'm not just going to cater to one preference. And then the last colour... And you do want to try and keep these colours in the order that you mix them. So the darker red, whoops, the lighter red, although it doesn't matter if those two get mixed up a little bit anyway. And then obviously the violet, followed by the dark blue, and then the light blue, and then the translucent. I'm, I'm keeping them in that order and you'll see why. So the last little bit of chopping to do. And um, I'm going to get in a mess in it a minute again. No, you come here and you go there and you go there and you go there. Stay in your own lane. All right, so that's all the chopping. And like I say, we need to keep these colours separate-ish and in the order that we mix them. So I've got all these separate piles going on. Okay. Let me just... Uh, okay. I don't care if these two piles get mixed up a little bit because they're relatively close in colour. Alright, so the next thing then um, is the mica powder. And this is what's going to give the piece the gold veins. And I'm just going to tap a little bit into each pile. I don't want to overdo it too much. Like so. Maybe a little bit more in that one. I'm just going to leave it there and tumble each colour to see how it looks. I might add a little bit more. But I think that's pretty good. I mean, if you want to add more, you can. But um, I find that if you add too much, the piece can get a little bit smeary from the powder. I think I need to add just a touch more in this pile. So there's that. Let's bring this purple over. Uh, 
and I think that's good as well. And yep, yeah, I think that's good. And then the light blue. And I think that's good. Last but not least, the trans. And I think that's good. Okay, so it is messy, and if you want to wear gloves, feel free to do so. I don't personally, um, but that's just me. And then you need to grab your liquid clay, which I had upside down so it pours easier. And just drizzle a little bit on each of the piles. I know this is a lot of um, to in and fro in, but you do need to keep the piles separate, so that's why I'm doing it this way. But I'm just adding the liquid clay on each pile. Sorry if I went out of view a little bit there, but that is all I'm doing, is adding the liquid clay. I'll just put a little bit more on that one. Oh, I missed this one. And I'm hoping that'll be enough. Right, now this is where we get messy again. And I know some people will not do this method, this technique, simply because it is so messy. And it really is, but um, I just like it. I just like the effects of it. I like how the pieces always look so nice afterwards. All right, so I'm taking my translucent and I'm just forming it into a very rough block. It doesn't even have to be square, actually, just as long as it's all clumped together. I'm just going to wipe my hands a bit because they're getting a bit sticky. So, like I say, I'm just kind of pushing it together, squishing it together. It doesn't even have to be square. And I'm not particularly aiming for a square. it kind of gets squashed into into a square towards the end anyway but for now I'm just doing very rough chunks like this alright so then you're going to go to your dark red first no no you're not we're going backwards we're going backwards because the stone goes from red to translucent and then there's that the blue and the purple in, in the middle so we're going with the light blue it's a good job I didn't do that the wrong way. So again, I'm just mixing the um, liquid clay into this, but I'm not clumping it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and kind of attach it to that translucent clump. And I'm getting a little sticky again, so I am going to just wipe my fingers down. And you're just kind of taking it around that block that you've already made and just squeezing it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can have more on one side than the other. Um, oh my gosh. Sticky mess. Just wipe my fingers again. No doubt by the end of this tutorial my desk will look like an absolute mess again, but oh well. And no doubt there'll be crap all on the floor again. I'm terrible, you know, I tend to drop stuff on the floor, bits of clay get stuck to it and I don't know. Alright, so that's really all you're doing. And I'm just going to turn it the other way and kind of form it from the other side as well. Like so. Then the next little pile, the dark blue, I'm just going to mix the liquid clay into that. I need 
there. You get so many pieces stuck to your finger that when you wipe your hands you lose some of it. <laughs> I'm trying to get, a, get as much of it off my fingers as possible but um, it's not cooperating. So quick wipe again just to make my hands less sticky and now I'm just going to do the same thing again and just attach to what we've already got. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have more on one side than the other. I might take a little bit away from there though because I'm not going to be able to get it all the way around otherwise. Although that doesn't matter either. You could have a little bit where there isn't any of one colour. It's pretty random. I mean, if you think about a stone, when, when it's cut into, it's random what you're going to get. It's not perfectly uniform or symmetrical. So, you know, you can be a little bit more organic with this. As long as you, you know, keep the colours separate from each other pretty much. And I've got a little bit of blue stuck there, so... And I'm always turning it around to the other side as well to make sure it's good both sides. Then the purple. And again, just... <laughs> I've got a song in my head. It's um, that I'm Dizzy song, but all I'm thinking is Sticky, do 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 do. I'm so sticky. <laughs> I always get like songs in my head that just randomly appear and kind of fit in with what I'm doing. Maybe I'm a bit weird, I don't know. All right, so same thing. And you just have to kind of pile it up. And like this is not, I haven't got enough purple to go all the way around, but doesn't matter. It looks kind of cool when it's a little bit more organic like this. So I'm just squashing it in again on both sides. Oops. Let's wipe some of this away now. And then uh, the lighter red. I think that's the lighter red, although it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because they're very similar. And I'm just going to do the same thing. But I'm just going to kind of roughly do this and kind of mix and match this. She says. It looks a mess right now. Don't panic. It will all come together. Um, I'm just going to wipe my hands again, guys. So, if you don't like getting extremely messy, this might not be the one for you, but... I just love how it looks when it when it's been baked and resined. So I'm just getting those final little pieces together as best as I can because this does look <laughs> a mess. <laughs> oh dear. Right, this is getting on my nerves now sticky bits everywhere let me just clean up a little bit guys because otherwise I'll start getting flustered and I've just got my little cutters ready for what I want to use 
I don't want that little bit of blue in there. And I've got bits everywhere, so I'm just going to get rid of those. And let's get back to this and try and form it into some kind of block now. So you are going to start compressing it once everything's together and it might take a little bit of work and some of it is refusing to stick but now just gently turn it and squeeze all the way around and keep turning it you know over as well and just start to form it into a block Don't panic if it doesn't work right away. You just have to keep working with it. I've got these few little bits escaping. So you really are squashing it into a block now this is a good arm exercise and I found as well that the back side of it does concave a little bit but don't worry too much about that because we're only going to take slices anyway but can you see it's kind of divoted in the back a little bit I don't know if my camera's uh, dirty, screen is dirty, or if it's like fogged over a little bit. I'm hoping it hasn't fogged over, guys. It's very humid today. I'm guessing it's just I've had my dirty fingers all over it again. So, yeah, just keep squishing and squashing. Don't worry about the back concave in too much you can just kind of press it down a little bit and I'm going to take it a bit smaller than this it does take some time guys just saying and I think I'm a bit annoyed with that little bit there that's kind of done its concavey thing. But that's good now, I think. You could take it smaller if you wanted to. Actually, I think I will. Because if you make it too big, when you take your slices and then cut your piece out, you're not going to catch all of the colours. But again, that's not essential that you do, I guess, because stones and rocks and things like that are pretty random anyway. But I am taking it down quite small. And I think that will have to do. All right, so there's the block. Just give my hands another wipe. Let's wipe this down a little bit. Just make sure my cutters are clean. And I think that's good. Okay, so there we go, that's the block. So here it goes with the first slice. Ta -da. I absolutely love this. So now you can see all the layers of colours. And that's why you didn't just that's why you don't just throw them all together. You want it to look like this. Alright. So let's take another slice.
and there we go so I'm just gonna I'm actually just gonna take the back side off of this I don't want that bit there showing I maybe should have cut that a little bit thicker but oh well I'm just gonna take this bottom end off so it looks a bit nicer on the other side and I'm just going to take my roller, give it a gentle roll. Now I don't want to put this through the pasta machine, I don't want it stretched too much. So if you're conscious of it being um, unlevel, just get something like this and you can roll it to the thickness of these little sticks or whatever it is that you've got and that means it's going to be more level without it getting too um, stretched looking. So there we go. That's the first little bit. And I'm going to see if my earrings will fit on there. Oh, I need to get the, the other one for that, don't I? Derp, derp. Because it's the reverse, the reverse piece did I do with it? There it is. That's not going to fit so I might have to use hmm what to do what to do I might have to stretch this out a bit thinner um, now if you don't want your pieces too thin then obviously don't do this but I'm going to be putting quite a bit of resin on these uh, I don't want it too thin, obviously, but I need to be able to get both of these on there, almost there. Actually, these these sticks are a decent thickness anyway. I've never actually. Um, seen what it would be on the pasta machine to be fair but there we go I think I can just about get those on there now so that's the first little pair oh this one's a little short but I'll make it work Don't throw the extra pieces away, that can be reused. Oh, that didn't go through very well, did it? And that one was a little short, but I'm just going to do that and then match it up on the other side. Edges need tidying a little bit. I'm just going to give this a bit of a reshape because I, I did cut it a little short there, guys. Oops. Oh dear, what am I doing? So, I'm just going to get the crumblies off this. And um, try and match it to the other one. Okay, so first little pair of earrings, they'll look amazing when they're baked. Just going to get this out of the way. Like I say, don't, don't just mush these up into, you know, a ball of yuckiness. You can reuse them. 
still get really cool effects and actually you could just do a straight up chippy choppy with them anyway all right so now i'm using this cutter this time so this one's a lot longer so i need to get these strips these um slices longer so i'm going to cut a fairly thick piece and i think i'm just going to put two together like this and I've still got a nice little chunk left but I'm just going to do this today and then oh, let me clean that a little bit first and then roll so I want to roll it longer and the earrings don't have to match I know I kind of match those other ones but they don't have to they're stones they're random they're organic So I'm just going to roll these two together as best I can and hope, oh, I could do it that way I suppose, but that means rolling it out a bit thinner. Although I could just cut the end off a little bit or I could go that way. Not sure what to do now, guys. Which way to go? Hmm. Bum bum bum. Now, see if I do that. Actually, I'm going to try and incorporate. Hmm. I don't know now, guys. I don't know what to do. I wish there was somebody here to tell me what to do. I think I'm just going to go like that now, because then it won't get that in. I'm just going to go there, I think. And hope for the best. And then I can do the same here. So these do kind of match again, but yeah. Oh, shall I go there? No, there's not enough room there. All right, I'm just talking to myself, guys. I'm just trying to work out where I want to cut this, but I'm just going to go there. Okay, and there's these two nice pieces left, which can be used for another pair of earrings. But there we go. That's what they look like pre-baked. I love them, personally. All right, so I have got all this left, but that's all I'm going to do on camera. And um, I just need to grab some paper. To put these on. So I'll go and bake them. Actually, before I go, I'm going to give them a bit of a wipe with some rubbing alcohol. And try and tidy this one up a little bit. But I'll mess with that a little bit more off camera, guys. So that's one pair. That's two pairs. I am just going to give them a quick clean with some alcohol and a wet wipe. Oops, I'll put that back on there for the time being. give them a little wipe now what I do with these when they're baked is I sand them all over with a 320 grit just to get some of the extra um, surplus to requirement mica powder off and especially to get the edges smooth as well so I will sand them all over with a 320 grit um, but I will always sand the edges um, because I don't usually resin my edges I find it too I don't know too time consuming too fiddly so what I tend to do is resin front and back 
but I'll sand the sides through to about 800 grit just so they're a little smoother and uh, softer looking but there you go guys they're the pieces so I'm going to go and bake those and I'll be back and I will show you these and some other pieces that I made all right guys see you in a minute I'm back guys and they're finished um, it seems that my camera was either a little dirty or it fogged up so the rest of this video might seem a little bit cloudy but I've decided to publish it anyway whoops because you can still see what I'm doing so I do apologize for that but it's rectified anyway here's the earrings that I made and I've just resined them front and back that's those ones and these are the other ones that I did and I've just done a simple I did a jump bail and um, earring hoop to these, uh, earring hook. So they're the other ones. I love them, I really do. And then I just made another pair as well. Whoops. So there's those ones. I love them. So there's those, and I've just got another piece under the uv lamp so this isn't finished but i just quickly did a pendant as well and um i don't know i just really like these it's so colorful but let me just show you what they look like with the light shined underneath so this wire is getting in my way excuse me a second while i move it out the way all right so i just love Look at that, the translucency in that. I just love it. Let's see what this one looks like. So pretty. All right, guys, so that's all for today. Them's the pieces that I did on camera. And uh, just a couple more pieces that I did. All right, guys, so, you know, they're the colours that I used. You could, I think I actually hung this the wrong way. I suppose I can change it back round. They look nice on both sides, I guess, but anyway. All right, guys, I'm rambling, so I'm going to go. And I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you later. Bye.